Shalom, the Lord bless you. This is Pastor Allen. It's my joy and pleasure once again to share the word of God with you the next couple of minutes. And I'm persuaded that God is going to bless you that is watching this particular message. Now, I want to share a subject about mankind without gold is nothing. Mankind without gold is nothing. Looking at the Psalm 24, the Bible says, the earth is the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it, the world and they who dwell in it. The earth is of the Lord, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it, the world and they who dwell in it. Verse 2, he founded, for he has founded it upon the seas, established it upon, established it upon the current and the rivers. Now, this is the psalm of David. is trying to simply help us to understand that first and foremost, the earth belongs to the Lord. Why does he say like that? And people may begin to think otherwise, but the fact remains that the earth indeed belongs to the Lord. And it belongs to the Lord in the sense that it is him that created the earth and of course the heavens, of course the entire creation is subject to the Lord. Now, with this in mind, we need to understand that if God, if the earth belongs to God and God created the earth, he founded it himself, that is to say that nobody can simply come and claim that actually he discovered the earth. No, I will help you to understand scripturally, but first we need to establish the fact that the earth is of the Lord. No any human being owns the earth. No any single personality owns the earth, regardless of how powerful they may appear to be. No one owns the earth. Now I'm going to read uh, a particular passage here from this book of John, chapter number one. The Bible says, from verse number one, in the beginning before all time was the word. The word was with God and the word was God himself. He was present originally. All things were made and came into existence through him. All things were made and came into existence through him. Of course, they speak about the person of Christ. Without him was not a thing made that has come into being. Now, Paul and John rather is helping us to understand that everything that has come into existence, it came as a result of God. God enabled, rather God created everything that we see today. He allowed what we see today to come to play. And therefore, mankind has no any single excuse of not acknowledging of God. Of course, we are living at a time where people are becoming godless. Mankind is assuming that it can, it can do without God. And we are seeing a lot of, uh, you know, uh, godlessness from a global scale. It is very unfortunate. But let's go back to the book of Genesis chapter number one. Genesis chapter number one. Genesis chapter number one. The Bible says, this is the book of creation that is, you know, it, it speaks about the chronology of creation. Everything that, of course, you want to know about creation, you come to the book of Genesis and especially chapter number one, two. That's where creation, everything took place, came to shape. Now, in this particular same chapter of chapter number one, we discover God coming up with the uh, issue of trend of creating mankind. But before we do that, you look at verse number, chapter one, verse number one. The Bible says, in the beginning, God prepared God, not anybody else, God formed, fashioned, created the heavens and the earth. God created, God created the heavens and the earth in the beginning when there was nothing God was. It is normally said and it is very true, God without man, he remains to be God. Man without God, he's nothing, literally. 
And we need to appreciate the fact that actually it's God who simply created us as human beings, regardless of what kind of a race you are. Of course, we are all human race, but of course, there is the issue of actually the pigmentation that has created the rift among us, humanity across the universe. However, let us continue. The Bible says in verse 26 of Genesis, God said, let us, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, make mankind. Now look at that. Let us make mankind in our image and after our likeness. Let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, birds of the air, ten beasts over, over all of the earth, over everything that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and his image likeness. God created him, male, female, he created them. Now, the origin, the, uh, how can I say? The, God is the source of man. It is God who simply brought man into being. Now, we are now we're living in a time where we are almost 8 billion people on the planet Earth. Of course, others have died. We could even be more than that. Others are being born. Of course, the, the, the human population will keep increasing at the end of the day. But the fact is, the first man, the first man, Adam, Adam and Eve, they came as a result of God. The mankind came because of God. It was not, man did not, man was not there. Man was not existing. Man only existed in the mind of God. And God said, let us make man. After creating all other uh, beings and of course the animals and the, 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 the nature by itself, the universe, God said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. No any single human being, those that are and those that have gone, that can claim that they came by themselves. It is God who is behind the existence of mankind. And I'll explain uh, further as for you to understand that it's very important to know that indeed mankind without God is nothing. Literally nothing. Regardless, you know, man can invent cars, man can come up with proper infrastructure, man can do all these things. But that is one thing you need to understand man cannot sustain himself in terms of life. And I'm going to show you in Genesis chapter number two, verses number seven. This is now the outer man, the fleshly man, the outer man, the body that houses the spirit, the real man. The Bible says. Then the Lord formed the man out of dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils. Now look at that. When man was formed out of dust, this outer man, this flesh, this body now, the body was formed out of dust, out of the earth, out of dust. But that body was lifeless. Lifeless. Literally. It had no life. That's why when somebody dies, the spirit of a person leaves the body and the body becomes lifeless. Who gives that spirit? Who gives that life? It is glory. So in this particular reading, the Bible says, And God breathed in his nostrils the breath of spirit of life. And the man became a living being. Man became a living being. That is to say, this is the first man, of the first uh, in Genesis 1, 26, 27, that is the first man who is the spirit man. And then, this spirit man has no color, has no, I mean, let me tell you something. The spirit of a man doesn't have blood, doesn't have color. It is actually invisible. You cannot just see the spirit of a man with your naked eyes. But because man, God created the earth for man to function on the earth, because the earth is physical, the earth is tangible the earth is you can feel you can see so man needed the body and God used this, the outer body in Genesis 2 7 this body became the housing for the spirit of man because the real man is a spirit this is the housing for the spirit the real person is the spirit so the Bible says here that when God formed man out of dust, he breathed in this man the breath of breath of the spirit, and the man became a living being. That to say, that outer man, this man that was formed out of the dust, that man could not live, could not have anything about life without God breathing into this man. And that's why 
after all is said and done, God has the final say over the human life. Literally, without God, regardless of which particular place you are on the planet Earth, it is God who simply brings or gives life to every human being. Literally, this natural life that we have, it is because of God. And if it is not God, then there is no life. And as I said again, why are we having generations, or why are we having, why is mankind beginning to act as if like they don't need God? Psalms 100, very important. Psalms 100. Psalms 100. I'm going to read verse number 3. The psalmist rises and says, No perceived, cognize, and understand of the approval that the Lord is God. It is He who has made us. It is He who has made us, not we ourselves. We are His, we are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. The psalmist is simply saying that. We need to know that no is acknowledge, that no is to recognize, that no is to appreciate that the Lord is God. And then he says, it is he that made us. In essence, without him, we couldn't become what we are today. We couldn't be alive today if it wasn't God. We wouldn't even exist if it wasn't God. So the psalmist helped us to understand that we need to know, we need to perceive, we need to recognize we need to understand with approval that the Lord is God. It is he who made earth. It is he who created earth. No human being created themselves. No human being brought themselves into existence. But then we ask ourselves, why is mankind trying to simply act like they can live without God? Families across the universe, nations across the universe, cities, different communities, they are acting like, you know, they came by themselves, like they're the ones that are in charge. Listen, I listen carefully, listen very well. You can be in charge of your vehicle, you can be in charge of the money that you claim you have, but you cannot be in charge of this life that God gave unto you and gave unto me. Listen, at the end of it all, Without life, those things you have, they become futile, they become useless. Why? Because at the end of the day, you must be alive in order for you to simply enjoy whatever you have as a person. And that cannot go without saying that if that is to happen, then we must have this particular acknowledgement that God is God. And number two, he is our maker. Remember the Bible said the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to God and they that are in. God created mankind and planted him on the planet Earth. God, nobody bought the earth. Have you ever asked yourself a question? How comes even the richest of all the richest people in the world cannot simply say, I want to buy this planet called Earth and own it? How comes the richest of all the people in the world why can one day somebody say, well, I want to buy the entire earth and make it mine? No, the Bible is clear in Psalms 24 verse number 1. The earth and the fullness thereof belongs unto the Lord. He gave it to mankind to live within that particular realm of the earth. And that's what we are today. And therefore, if God created the earth, how can mankind remove God from the earth? It can't be. The earth belongs to God. So how can you remove God out of that which belongs to him. Very interesting. And you're seeing a lot of people coming around the world and acting in a very interesting way, trying to suppose that probably they can live without God, they can do without God. Listen carefully, you that is watching, listen and listen again. It regardless of how knowledgeable you are, it regardless of how intelligent you are, you cannot live without God. Mankind without God, is nothing. Mankind without God is useless. Mankind without God is like an engine without a car. Rather, like a car without an engine. It's simple as that. 
it is God who determines the existence of mankind. So listen carefully. I want to simply just help us to understand and to remove this mindset, this secular mindset that has become so dominant in these last days where people are becoming so godless. Families are becoming godless. Nations are becoming godless. You know, people are trying to simply remove God into different kind of, you know, circles. But yet, mankind is forgetting. His existence is because of God. This earth we are living in belongs to God. No any human being owns the earth. It belongs to God. Literally. It belongs to God. That's when somebody dies, they don't go with nothing. They leave it here. Why? Because the one who allowed you and me to be here is the one who determines. When you go, you go like that. And you know what? This body that was formed out of the dust, this body goes back to where it came from. Where did it come from? The earth. Genesis 2, 7. God formed man out of the earth, out of dust, this body, the outer body. Then the spirit goes back to the one that made it, waiting for judgment. Simple as that. So when we see people around the world acting and behaving like they own the entire world or they own the universe, what that is a fallacy. That is just a fiction. That is just deception. That is a lie that comes from the pit of hell. Even Satan himself owns nothing. The Bible calls him his in John 10:10. 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, destroy, and kill. The devil owns nothing. Why? Because as a matter of fact, he used to reside in heaven before, and then the Bible says it was cast down to the earth where mankind was dwelling. God owns everything. We need to understand and appreciate that. And so that we can be able to acknowledge God in every activity of our lives, in our families, in our communities, in our nations, we need to acknowledge God day in, day out. Failure to that, we are going to end up being nothing. Don't be deceived by the accumulation of what you have in terms of resources. Don't let that deceive you. If you want to know that is, is a deception, as time goes by, how comes you cannot regulate your ears and say, I'm not going to get older? Time comes and you will fade away because there is one person, God Almighty, who determines the existence of mankind. When your time is up, you're out. He decides. Nobody can simply say, I have so much money, I'll buy more ears, I'll be able to extend. It cannot happen, not now, not ever. And history has told us, we have seen from the time of creation to death, we have read, we have been able to study. We understand, people have come and gone, come and gone. Yet God remains to be God. Now, I want to show you something here that's very important. The Bible says in Psalms 102, the Bible says, at the beginning, at the beginning, you existed, laid the foundation of the earth. Look at that again. Laid the foundation of the earth. Let me ask a question, and I'm going to use a very simple analogy here. If today you go and rent an apartment, and somebody build it, the owner build it, of course, used to work us to build it. Then you rent the apartment. Does the apartment become yours? You tell me, but I can buy it and own it. Yes, you can buy it and own it from a human disposition. That's quite true. You can be given a document. A document. Let me ask this. Who has the title deed of the earth? You can have a title deed of a particular piece of land, particular building. But who has the title deed of the earth? It is God Almighty. He does not need to prove he's the creator. He does not, we need documentation to prove ownership. God does not need any documentation to prove that he owns everything. Everything is held together by him as God. While we human beings, we must produce documents to prove, I own this guy, I own this, I own this. But God does not need to prove anything. He is God. He doesn't need to prove to mankind that I'm God. He is God. Without man, God is God. And man without God is useless. Is nothing, literally. So, let me, tell, let, me, let me help us to understand it. The Bible says, In the beginning you existed, lay the foundation of the earth. The heavens are the works of your hands. They shall perish, but you remain and you are yes. 
all of them shall wear her out, become old like garment, like clothing. You shall change them. They shall be changed and pass away. But you remain the same. Your ears have no end. Think about that. God is eternal God. God has his ears have no end. You cannot count and say how old God is. But God has determined the ears of mankind. Well, especially in this generation that we are living, you cannot hear somebody living like in the olden days, like you know the early Bible days, where people like Methuselah used to live over 900 years. People like Noah, they used to live so many years. In our generation, in this particular uh, kind of you know, century, of course, a few centuries have gone. Mankind, many people don't live beyond even 100 years. If people go, maybe a lot of years, maybe it's about 120 years, and they are no more. If you happen to go to 150 years, that one is kind of you know, rare. It's quite not easy to find that. Why? Because God has simply determined the, the longevity of mankind within the earth frame. Why? He's the owner. And God will not sit back and watch evil taking place, destruction taking place. We cannot simply destroy, damage what God created. He entrusted us to live here. He gave us the right to live here. But a lot of people, evil has taken dominant and destruction is taking place all over the world. Have you even asked yourself, mankind invents sophisticated weapons at the same time he destroys himself with the same weapons? Mankind simply says he's too intelligent. But that intelligent, he doesn't use it for his own good. He ends up simply using it for his own destruction. Why? Because regardless of what man knows, without God, is useless. What may be simply commendable before mankind, it is not commendable before God. Why? Because God is omniscient. He knows everything. Nobody can measure up. No any university in the world, no any academic institution in the world, no any scientist in the world can simply measure up to God Almighty. He knows everything. You want to know that the, uh, the truth? Look at the way God created everything by himself without any human aid. He did it as God. And that's why the spread of humanity that we're simply looking, seeing it really spreading across the universe, you know, people ascending to the seat of power and they assume they're going to be there for, forever. No, there is only one that rules and rules forever and that is God Almighty. No, he's irreplaceable. He's unmatchable. Nobody can measure up to God. Nobody can vote God in. Nobody can replace God. I mean, nobody can do that. The entire human population can never simply say, today we are voting God out, being God. It can happen. We are existing because of his breath, because he has given us life. And that needs to be acknowledged across the universe. Very, very important. But sadly, people are trying to simply act like, well, we don't need God. I mean, at the end of the day, we can survive on our own without God. Many have said it, and they are no more. Many have simply uh, expressed their pride in simply saying that, well, we don't need God. Where are they nowadays? They are nowhere to be seen. And we're going to see even many more, many more of that kind, many people of that kind coming and going. Why? Because God, the Bible says, they, uh, the Bible says here, you remain the same, your ears shall have no end. That is verse number 27. Men come and go. Women come and go. People of great abilities come and go, but God remains God. Why? Because we are all subject to God. Remember, I'm talking about mankind without God is nothing. Literally nothing. I want to show you another reading here that is very important. Psalms 115. The Bible says, Psalms 115, verse 16. The heavens are of the Lord's. Uh, the heavens are the Lord's. Heavens. The earth he has given to the children of men. He has given. You know, we never owned it. So he says he has given the earth. To who? He has given. Uh, but the earth he has given to the children of men. He has given us. Think about that. We never had it. The heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given 
to the sons of men, or the children of men. That was said, the earth was given to us. It's our domain, it's our place of dwelling, but it belongs to God. According to Psalms 24, verse 1, the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to him, and they that dwell in it. So, he has given us. He has given us to dwell, to operate in. As it's our place of, that's why when somebody dies, when the spirit leaves your body, you cannot live. You're buried, you die and you're buried. Your chapter is closed. Why? Because your time is out and you can't be here without uh, you cannot, your spirit, your spirit cannot be here without the body. So the body functions well. Where? On the earth frame. And it's critical. It's very important that people need to appreciate that. Now, I want us to look at Acts of Apostle, chapter 17. Let's look at what Dr. Luke or Apostle Luke wrote about this, of course, regarding Apostle Paul. In Acts of Apostle chapter 17, verse 21, the Bible says, For the Athenians, all of them, and the foreign residents and visitors among them, spent their leisure time in nothing except telling or hearing something newer than the last. So Paul standing in the center of the Aeropergus Mass Hill meeting place said, Men of Athens, I perceive in every way, on every way, on every hand, with every time, I make that you are most religious, very reverent to demons. Look at that. The people in Athens, the Athenians, they were simply so loyal their allegiance were to the demons not to God then it says just like we see in our days for I have passed along carefully observed the objects of worship the objects of worship I came also upon an altar with inscription to the unknown God now what you have already we, now what you are already worshiping as unknown this I set forth to you. Verse 24. The God who produced and formed the world and all things in it. Now this Apostle Paul, the man who was a scholar in the law until he was converted in Acts of Apostles chapter number 9. He was a positive of the church of Christ that Christ had just founded. He's simply going back in going back to time. Going back to the chronology of creation. And he's trying to help this uh, the Athenians, you know, those people that are given to the demons. And he says, hey, hey, listen, you, you people, the God who produced and formed the world and all things in it, everything in the world, God who formed it, is simply helping them to understand how these things came to be. And then he says, being the Lord of heaven and the earth, look at that, being the Lord of heaven and the earth, does not dwell in handmade shrines. Neither is it served by human hands as though he lacked anything. God is never in need. <laughs> we are in need of God. You that is watching me, you are in need of God. Without God, you are nothing. If you are not born again, you are in need of Christ in your life. No nation in the world can ever say we don't need God. No, God does not have any need. Why? Because Everything is existing because of him. God does not have any need. He doesn't have any need. Like you and me, we are people that are in need of good life, in need of good health, in need of all these things, yet God owns everything. So, it says, um, neither is this served by human hands as though he lacked anything for it, for it is himself who gives life. Now, that is the bottom line. It is he himself who gives life. Who? God himself 
who gives life? Now, let me ask you a question. You that may be simply acting like, well, I don't need God. I mean, at the end of the day, how, how extends your being alive is because of God. Without God, we are lifeless. Without God, we are nothing, literally. So Paul is trying to make them understand here. These idols you're worshiping, they have no life. They have nothing in them. Then he says here, it is he himself who gives life and breath to all things, to all people. That is inclusive of even the animals that we see. They are alive because God gave them life to exist. No any human being on the planet Earth, however rich they may be, can simply say, I'm able to offer life to someone. No. God, when a child is born, or when the child, the mama is delivering, the first thing the doctors or the medics or the whoever is attending to that mama, and this is across the world, the first thing they want to simply ascertain is that the, baby, the child is alive. If the child is not alive, then the child cannot be kept. The mother, no matter how much love he has for the child, the child cannot, nobody would want to keep the corpse. So, in essence, or let me put it this way, the truth is, when the child is born, what matters is not the gender, it's life. Whether the child is a boy or a girl, crippled or not crippled, life which is given by God. Without that child having life, without the heartbeat beating, that child is useless. Literally. I've said this with regard to humanity, of course. No doubt playing that infant, but the fact is without life in that child, it's just a corpse. Same to us that are alive. The day the life of God leaves us, we become just cops. In fact, they normally say, we, they, we call it a body. You know, they are going to view the body. They are going to, but when you are alive, you are a living being. So, Paul continues and says, gives life bread to all things, to all people. And he made from one common origin. One source, one blood. Well, this actually solved the question of racial discrimination, the issue of tribalism, you know, the issue of imperialism based on pigmentation. The answer is here. We were all made from one source, you know, and sometimes we simply uh, exalt our outlook so much and sometimes we get so uh, we feel demeaned based on our outlook but I'll tell you something if indeed your outlook is of great importance humanly speaking because that's what we simply say then how comes when you are dead that body is still taken under whether you are black white, rich, or poor, that body is taken under. Whether it is burnt or not burnt, whether barren, it goes under. That's to say, God who gave us life in equality, the same God has allowed us to be subject to death in equality without prejudice, without uh, favorism. Whether you're in America, you die. You're in Africa, you die. Whether you're in America, you live. Whether you're here, you live. Why? Because we are all subject to God and it is God who is allowing us to live. Without him, we have no life. We're just cops. We are nothing, literally. And that has to be understood. And the Bible says, common origin, one source, one blood, all nations of men. All nations of men. No man should downplay or overlook another man or another woman downloading another woman. 
Listen, we were all created for heaven's sake. We were created. We are just created beings. Nobody should simply downplay another person. Okay, you are created. I was created. Or rather, we were born because Adam, the mankind was created. Then, of course, the human race began to emanate through the Adamic nature. But the fact is, nobody has an upper hand of another. Regardless of where you reside, we are all subject to God. And what simply, you know, brings uh, value and how can I say, it? what yeah, what really brings value in, in in our lives is the life of God in us. Is the spirit of is that life that God given to us? That's what brings significance in our lives. The Bible says, all nations of men to settle on the face of the earth. Again, God created mankind, determined their fate, and ensured that they are settling on the planet earth. The human settlement as per God's creation and plan was the earth. But I will say something. It is God who created the earth, created mankind, and made the earth to become the settlement of man. I will again ask, why do some people think that actually they deserve more than others, humanly speaking? It's because we don't have a proper understanding that we are all created of God. And when time comes, we'll be out sooner than later. And the Bible says, having definitely determined the allotment, periods of time, look at that, every single society every single person rich or poor there is an allotment of time everybody has a portion of time of existence every single person regardless of what kind of a person you are there is an allotment it's god who determines your longevity your duration of being alive it is already in the record of god how long you will live. How long I will live? When I'll be out of this, the earth, or when I'll be out of this body? So, I again ask a question: Why is mankind? Why do we have a, a percentage of human population that does not simply acknowledge God? Yet we cannot add time to our existence. We can't. No matter how rich we are, we have people that have all the money. I mean, they'll even just sleep. And I'm not saying money is bad. No, the love of money is what actually the root of all evil. But money is not bad. It's, it helps us to, you know, meet two, three, four things. But that is not all. Because if these people that have been so wealthy, they could have simply bought more years to live. They could have simply bribe the god or tell god let us buy if life was being bored then and ears were being bored then people could have bought ears and bought people that could have never had money could have died maybe even earlier but you have seen people that you know they are so wealthy and please don't misunderstand me i'm not playing anything to do with being wealthy if you're being if you're wealthy in an objective way in a godly way quite okay but that should not be the best of your pride because when you die, you leave these things here. Solomon said he had everything during his time. Everything he desired, he got. You know, the day, Bible said the days of Solomon, he made gold. Others say silver. Other places say gold as common as stones. That is to say the days of Solomon, gold was as common as stones. But Solomon said all this is vanity. Vanity and vanity. People you would walk in the palace, the house of Solomon, and everything is not gold coated. It is purely gold. The spoons, the knives, everything. The servants that were walking there, they were arrayed in a great and awesome way. But Solomon at conclusion, he said, all this is vanity and vanity. Because human satisfaction requires nothing less but God. Nothing in this life can satisfy the void that is within every human being other than God. He that created us can fill every void that we have in our lives. No, nothing in this world 
can fit. That's why even the richest people, see, they feel there is something amiss. Because God cannot simply allow what he created to grant you ultimate satisfaction as a human being. It is only him who can satisfy and fill every void in people's lives. People take their lives. People commit suicide. People get into so many dubious things. Why? Because at the end of the day, they're trying to look for satisfaction. But they're not finding it. Listen, man, it takes God for your life to be fully satisfied. That gratification, that void, that hunger, that void you feel in your life, it only needs nothing less but God. And that's why I say it. The greatest need of mankind, it is God. It is Christ, our Lord and our Savior, to fill that void. So Paul carries on and says, Happy the time, there are lot of periods of time, fixed boundaries, their habitation, their settlements, lands, and abodes, so that they should, they should seek God in hope that they might feel after him, find him, although he is not far from each one of us. Then 28 says, For in him we live, we move, and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, we are also his offspring. Let me say this. At the end of the day, life comes from God. And it seems that I set all those boundaries. Uh, you know, as I keep saying all the time, I mean, with all this knowledge that people really have, you know, God allowed them to have this own knowledge. How comes nobody has ever moved Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, to another place? How comes God designed all that and it's fixed and it will be the way it is? How comes nobody has changed the time of the sun showing up in the moon? It is God who decided that and nobody can alter that. Listen, human beings, we are limited. God is the only one who is not limited. He's infinite. He's not limited. He cannot be measured. So you cannot simply say, I can live without God. You can't. Life, mankind without God is nothing. That is what I'm saying. Mankind without God is nothing. Mankind without God, we shall see nothing less but continuous destruction. Continuous destruction, continuous evil all over the world, which is influenced by nothing else but no one else but the enemy, Satan himself. Now, I want to give a very good example again of another personality that some of you maybe may be aware about. In the book of Daniel, chapter 4. Daniel was in Babylon and they had been taken captive with other Jews and he was still maintaining his godly values and principles while still in Babylon. And Babylon was a place whereby these people were always given into other idols, other goals other than the almighty God. And um, the Bible says in verse 17, he had had a dream. And of course he called some of his soothsayers, magicians, the so-called the wisdom, wise men, to come and interpret the dream for him. But of course it proved hard. They couldn't do that. So Daniel was, of course, called upon and one was called, verse 17 says, This sentence is by decree of heavenly watches. The decision is by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the most high rules the kingdom of mankind and gives it to whoever he will, sets it over it to the humblest, lowliest of men. Now, think about that. If, if you look at Daniel chapter 2, you'll understand where, you know, Daniel was coming from. And in this particular statement, he's making the king to understand that this is written so that it may be known among humanity that God rules over the kingdom of mankind, the ultimate ruler, and he gives it to whoever he wills. You know, and even I see a lot of 
uh, you know, democracies around the world each year or rather after a particular period of time, like in our own country, we're about to have elections and of course people are being, begin to figure out who is going to ascend to power, who's going to, listen, at the end of the day, no political leader owns any single person or no any political leader owns this country or any other country for that matter. It is God who determines, who comes to power and who goes out. It's in the Bible. I didn't say that. It's written. Then he's addressing Nebuchadnezzar. Then verse 18 he says, This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen, and you, Belshazzar Daniel, declare now this interpretation, since all wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able for the spirit of the Holy One, Holy God, is in you. Now you see, Nebuchadnezzar, now, you know, it's very interesting to know that actually, Nebuchadnezzar is not a godly man. But God is communicating to him, telling him what he does not really like. Because people have what we call, God created mankind with a conscience of being able to know good and evil. Whether you are born again or not, there is that conscience within you that actually brings conviction that this is wrong, this is not right. This is wrong, this is good. Now, this king somehow, God, this is Babylon, don't forget that, not Israel, Babylon. And God is giving this man a dream. Then his wise men cannot interpret because the things of God can only be handled by them that are subject to God. It's quite interesting to know that actually, there is no way governments can be able to regulate and dictate how the things of God ought to operate. It can be. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream in his own kingdom. But that dream, his wise men, his agents, could not interpret. Because the things of God are mysteries that can only but be revealed by the Holy Spirit. The things of God, the church of Christ, is governed by one only, the Holy Spirit of God. And this is need to be taken into account. Very important. So the Bible says, so Nebuchadnezzar acknowledges that actually Daniel has the spirit of God in him and is able to interpret. And of course, verse 24, the Bible says, you can read the rest for yourself, but verse 24, the Bible says, this is the interpretation, O king. It is the decree of the Most High God which has come down upon, upon my Lord, the king. You shall be driven from among men. Look at that. You shall be driven among men. Your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. You shall be made to eat grass or do as do the oxen. You shall be wet with dew of heaven. Seven times or seven years shall pass over you until you learn and know and recognize that the Most High God rules the kingdom of mankind and gives it to whoever he will. This is Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar probably in his own assumption was, this is my empire, this is my kingdom, this is my domain. Forgetting that God rules. Remember, the earth is a dwelling place of mankind given by God. And Nebuchadnezzar, who is not a godly man, is a pagan leader in the Babylonian world. Kingdom, rather. And God intrudes. God interjects, speaks through Daniel. How do, could these other magicians and wise men understand how God communes when it comes to his will? They couldn't understand. And that's why men and women of God ought to take their place to communicate the mysteries of God among us humanity. It's very important. We cannot back off. We cannot be covered. No, we need to stand and begin to hear not our own things, but we hear the mind of God, the heart of God, and communicate as it is without any compromise. So Daniel did not mince his words. As God spoke to him, he began to pre present these words to this particular king. And can you imagine speaking to such kind of a king? You would even probably be scared of like, you know, I could say things that don't please him. And maybe he could think that maybe I'm just making up my own things. Maybe they could take me, they could kill me. But Daniel was scared of nothing. I mean, he had faced the worst at the end of the day. 
you know and the Bible says so that is to say during his kingship as a king in Babylon he did not he, he began developing a heart of not acknowledging God just like we are living these last days we are seeing this playing so loud among his nations around the world leaders not really embracing God political leaders not embracing God trying to downplay God Nebuchadnezzar was one of the most powerful king that ever lived during his time yet God communicated with him and the Bible says so this was later on of course Daniel gave him an advice and in and in it that it was commanded to leave the stamp of the roots of the truth verse 27 your kingdom shall be sure to you after you have learned and know that God of heaven rules now I look at all our political leaders using their money using their resources to uh, seek for seats of power political seats sometimes I feel pity for them because at the end of the day Nebuchadnezzar was in the seat of power he was already a king but God disrupted his kingship why because he determines if you sit in the seat of power without acknowledging God he who allows people to ascend to power you'll be out you'll be out because God rules over the kingdoms of mankind and I'm saying this even a precious country here blessed country whoever ascends to power whether you are an MC or whether you are a senate regardless of which position you hold you must have this within your heart that God has to be acknowledged you are sent to the seat of power political seat without having reverence for the Lord acknowledging God I can tell you your time is limited your days are numbered because God is the one nobody owns the highest seat other than God he determines who comes to power and who doesn't come to power Satan tried to, to fight him in heaven Revelation 12 tells us that he wanted to overturn the government of God it never worked he was cast down and he came on the face of the earth with this anger and his rage charging against the human race anyway that's not our subject today let's look continue with the Nebuchadnezzar and look at what happened uh, the word is until you have learned and know that God of heaven rules I'm talking to some of that are aspiring to become leaders not even now maybe even the days to come any seat of power political power or any other seat of power it is God when you sit there know there is a higher God who rules over all he can kick you out anytime he can bring others that you don't like on that particular seat whether you're a, it doesn't matter what whatever capacity you are I mean whatever seat you're holding on whatever seat of authority you're holding it you have to acknowledge God every single day failure to that you are in nothing less but destruction to yourself as a person verse 27 the Bible says therefore O king let your counsel be acceptable to you break off your sins show reality of your repentance righteousness right standing with God moral spiritual rectitude rightness in every area of relation liberate yourself from your iniquity by showing mercy loving kindness to the poor and oppressed he never took uh, concerned himself for the the poor he oppressed people you know during his reign as a king and that if the king will repent there may poss possibly be a, a countenance of lengthening of your peace tranquility and healing of your era and all this was fulfilled and came upon King Nebuchadnezzar he was given God never leaves man without a room to turn around and that's why even in this last days before the final judgment takes place Christ came to bring the ultimate redemption to the entire human race he paid for the sins of humanity he paid for the sins of every human being regardless of where you reside he died on the cross of Calvary he paid the ultimate price for every single soul that's alive today 
the choice remains for each and every person to actually accept Christ in their lives and to avoid the end time judgment that may be meant to befall mankind. And the Bible says, verse number 29, and the end of 12 months, he was walking in the royal palace of Babylon, royal palace of Babylon. The king said, is not this great Babylon, look at that, great Babylon, that I have built as a royal residence, a seat of government by my might, my power, for my honor and glory and majesty. Look at that. Babylon became so powerful, so great. Then he stands there in the, you know, standing right in the palace, walking in the royal palace. He looks at that the way the palace and he says, is this Babylon? Uh, he says, okay, the king said, is not this the great Babylon? I have built. He said, I have built this Babylon. I have built. And we see all these people attributing. <laughs> it's so unfortunate. You know, I look at, listen to political leaders around the world, how they attribute their success, you know, the way of governance to themselves. I have done this. I have done this. They don't even acknowledge God in whatever their, their statement. You listen and you feel sorry for some of these leaders. If God never gave you strength, if God never gave you, you know, uh, right people to work along with, how would you achieve all these things? It is God. How I wish I would hear people say, those that are in the helm of power, it is by God's help, it's by God's grace that I've been able to attain what you have attained. It's by God's grace. Unfortunately, everybody wants to exalt themselves. I did this, I did this, I did this. Listen to me. It is only God who enables people to ascend to the seat of power. It is God who enables people to succeed in their journey of governance where governance is concerned, and even other areas of our lives. Or you can say, but I use my own intelligence. Listen to me. If God never gave you the ability to have that sound mind, you wouldn't be able to achieve that. Everything that we do, we can never rule out God. We can't. In our daily engagement, we can never rule out God. It is God who is always with us. So, this particular king, does not, we don't see any place him acknowledging God. To my glory, to my honor. He's not simply, and this is what is playing loud in these last days. People are even plotting on how they can simply get God out of communities. Get God out of the nations. Listen, if you want to see nations around the universe cave in, become subjected, it is when we begin to take God out of the nations, God out of our societies, God out of communities, then we begin to see the evil that is going to simply take, I mean, how evil is going to, how, rather how destruction is going to work in in all these areas of our lives. How I pray that nations will begin to acknowledge and embrace God and more so, Christ Jesus who has brought the reality of God into our lives. And the Bible says, verse 31, while the words were still in his king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king of Gadnezer, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you. People never removed Nebuchadnezzar from the seat. Why? Because at the end of the day, it's going to allow him to ascend to the seat of power. But God because Nebuchadnezzar was so powerful, so powerful that nobody would simply dare move him or try to threaten him. But what God did, it was quite, I mean, I don't think at the time, even uh, in our time, I don't think it's going to happen. Probably it may or may not. But the fact is, he became like an animal, four-legged being, just like animals. He was scooped too low. He was reduced to be like an animal. His body was hairy like an animal. He had long nails. 
like an animal and he began eating grass for seven good years the royal the palace is there but he's not sitting there he's in the bush he's in the forest with animals very interesting forest with animals the most powerful listen all power belongs to god psalm 62 verse 11 all power belongs to god no one can ever be powerful more than god the psalmist has said it very well power belongs to god yes psalmist said psalms 62 verse 11 god has spoken once twice i've heard this that power belongs to god power the ultimate power belongs to god so the Kanesa has no say. And what happened? The Bible says, you shall be driven from the among men, dwelling with living creatures. You'll be made to eat grass like oxen seven years. Of course, all that happened. And then again, what happens? Um, shall pass over you until you have learned and know that the Most High God rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whoever he wills. Anyone that is seeking for political seat, maybe during this season or even the season that are coming, Listen to me. The key to the seat of power is nothing less but humility. Acknowledgement that only God can enable me to ascend to the seat of power. With that, it ha with having that in mind, then the of you ascending to the place of power is very easy. Because you know that actually God rules over all. And he determines who comes to the seat of power. Pride is what made Satan leave heaven. And now... He's waiting judgment as he messes up nations and communities around the world. But his days are numbered. The Bible says, verse 34, And at the end of the day, seven years, I of God lifted up my eyes to heaven, and my understanding and my right use of my mind returned to me, and I bless the Most High. I praise and honor and glorify Him who lives forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and His kingdom endures from generation to generation. Verse 35, very important. And in all, and all the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing. All the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing. This is Nebuchadnezzar, the most powerful king that ever lived during his time. He has come back to his senses. Now we are hearing his mouth talking about God, acknowledging the kingship of God, the dominion of God. He's acknowledging, for he could not do so. Listen, you that is in a place of success, a place of power, is self. You have to acknowledge God. If you're going to remain there, in that place of success, you have to learn to acknowledge God. Nebuchadnezzar was so successful, so powerful from a human disposition, but he never attributed his success to God. He gave credit, all the credit to himself, all the praise to himself. But now coming back from the forest after seven years, he began to bless the Most High glorified him honored him and began to simply acknowledge even his kingship his dominion then he says all the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing he does according to his will listen carefully we Kenyans are about to vote god will do as he wills not as we feel not as we like but as he wills the next person that is going to sit in the shadow of power in this season and others that are going to come it is all determined by God. He does as he will at the end of the day. It says, um, according to his will in the host of heaven and among inhabitants of the earth, none can stay his hand and say to him, what are you doing? Some of, us, some of you said maybe you're not going to simply not be quite uh, pleased because everybody has this proclivity, this persuasion that is going to be this one. It's going to be this one. And I'm speaking from the context of our country here. Because in the next few days, we should be voting. But the point is this. God will do as he wills. And nobody can object. God has the ultimate and the final. 
in the matters human gap. Please, I want us to understand something. As we simply come up with laws to help us, you know, live in harmony and know how to govern ourselves as a society, as a people. Listen, after all is said and done, God has the final say. Anything entrenched within the constitution that does not simply replicate the values of God, it's going to be sooner than later be watered down. Because after all is said and done, God has the best and the ultimate values that can simply enable mankind to coexist with each other without creating friction or rift amongst each other. Very important. So even when it comes to the policy making, when it comes to simply making of the laws, God simply needs to be given his place. It should not just be left to human ideologies and human philosophy. No. God has to be given his place even within our constitution. God must be given his place. And that is extremely important. But we are seeing this not playing very well in these last days in so many countries. God forbid that this may not work against our country, that we don't see people that are going to come with a different kind of, you know, issues that are not going to work well for our country. How I pray that God is going to help us. And I'm talking just about now, even the generations to come, that nobody is going to entrench things that are not going to simply play well with, you know, when it comes to godly values and principles. Very important. And the Bible says, so, Nebuchadnezzar simply was able to acknowledge the most powerful king those days, that all inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, and he does according to his will, the host of heaven. Why? Because we are all created of God. We are his creation, and he has the final say. And nobody can object whatever he desires to do. Why? Because he's God, and nobody can change that. I want to give you Two scriptures, then we're going to finish. Psalms 22. Verse 28, the Bible says, For the kingship and the kingdom are of the Lord's. He rules, I mean, he is the ruler of our nations. The ruler of our nations. People can fight God's rulership as far. But a day is going to come when this is going to be proved. And that's why all the kings that have ever existed, even during the days of the Old Testament, even today, those kings are powerful kings. Alexander the Great, you can name them. Nimrod during his day, you know, there are no more people like Hitler, there are no more. They were there, they were termed as powerful. There are no more. They're subjected to the earth. How can a created being try to assume the place of God, try to behave like they are gods, like they are too powerful? Listen, we have a great God. He's the ultimate. He's the, he the almighty God who determines the fate of every single nation, every single family, every single community, every single personality. And nobody, regardless, don't let these things that are happening this last day deceive you. God remains to be God. And he will always remain God. He rules over all the nations. Psalm 33. The Bible says, verse 8, let the earth Fear the Lord. Revere and worship him. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. This is the psalm. This psalm is helping us to understand that let the earth fear the Lord. Revere and worship him. He spoke about the earth. Let all the inhabitants of the world, all, all the inhabitants of the earth, all, the Bible says all, 
stand in awe of him. He spoke and it was done. He commanded and it was it stood first. The Lord bring the counsel of the nations to naught. The counsel of the nations, the plans of the nations, he brings them to nothing. He makes the thoughts and the plans of the people of no effect. God is able to simply thwart any plan that is not in line with his will and purpose. And I'm talking about nations. That means God has influence over nations of the world. Even though that we think that God is not, God, there's nothing that is happening that is taking God by surprise. He's all knowing. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows. He knows the end from the beginning. And in the next coming days, you will see all these we call so powerful people, they are going to simply bow. You know, we normally say you can bow down or you'll bow later. But the fact is, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Christ is Lord. Listen carefully. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught. He makes the thoughts and the plans of the people to no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of his heart throughout all generations. Verse 12 says, Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people who has chosen as his heritage. With those few words, I want to simply, I pray for our own nation and other nations around the world. The Bible says, the nation who God is their God is a blessed nation. When each and every nation is able to appreciate God, acknowledge God, the people there will be blessed. The nation will be blessed. But when people don't appreciate that God is their God, then, well, havoc will take place. Evil will take place. The extraction will take place. But how I'm praying for my country. I'm praying for the continent of Africa. I'm praying for each and every continent around the world that men of every kind will begin to embrace and acknowledge God. Those who don't have the knowledge yet, may God enable you to have that knowledge by his spirit. May we embrace our Savior, Christ Jesus, who in the next couple of years to come, he is going to simply do something unusual right on the planet earth the bible tells us clearly he's going to rule right from jerusalem for a thousand years the millennium reign a thousand years he'll be ruling there he's the ultimate ruler he's the king of kings you receive him in your life you are secure your destiny and your future eternally because mankind without god is nothing mankind without the Savior is nothing may you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior for you to have this continuous encounter of God's presence in your life I know many people around the hour out there they have been questions one after another things that are happening around the world listen to me it's God communicating to mankind because mankind are drawing away from God they're trying to remove God the earth does not belong to any person, it belongs to God. He has given us to dwell here, but we are not the real owners of the earth. So nobody can say, I own the earth. God is the owner. He has entrusted us to live here. Because he created us, he created the earth, created us as well. He's the only one that is not created. But we, all of us, are created. Live with humility. Live with Acknowledging and appreciating that God is God. And it shall be well in your family, shall be well in your society, shall be well in your community, it shall be well in different countries, including our own country, if we learn how to acknowledge God, even though that are going to vie for political seats. If you go with a disposition of God within your heart, it shall be well. Because without God, our ideas are useless. Without God, our plans will end up nowhere. Without God, our efforts will become useless. God has to be the center of the equation now and the days to come. And there is no question about it. You want your life to be well? God has to be the center of every affair of your life. Christ has to be the center of every affair of your life. Without that, you're bound to fail. 
and to get in a state of continuous frustration as a person. The Lord bless do you good. May we keep on growing the knowledge of our Lord and our Savior, just Christ alone. Peace. Once again, this is Pastor Allen. God be with you and God bless you. And may we have a peaceful moment even of election this coming few days in Jesus' name. God bless you and do good in Jesus' name. Amen.